of weird. Unless she has a kid, and that would make sense. Yeah. What are you doing today? I'll just run around like crazy. Did you get some of that Bojangles out there? No, but I hate it. Do you already. want some? I'll go get no, some. No, I don't want any. Thank sure? you very much. Yes, no, I don't want any. How can you be from Hickory <laughs> and not be doing it? Because I've already had Bojangles this morning. Like it's yeah, it's great. Like Maybe I should grab some to take home with me, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab yeah, me a couple. That's how you... You're, that's how you're going to get on the good side of your dad if you take him home with some, some Bojangles. <laughs> that's right. He's actually coming to see me Friday, so maybe I'll really? just hang on to it. Oh, my God. How are, <laughs> how are you going to get away with telling all those jokes about your dad? He loves it. Does he? Yeah. Does he sit there and go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell him to stand up, and he'll, he'll do like this. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. She's pretty straight-laced. Oh, I'm pretty clean on stage. Have you seen me on stage? Well, I don't that, cuss. Well, the, my wife is a Christian. Yeah, I mean, I might say ass or hell, but, but that's as far as it. It's in the Bible. Right. You can say that. It doesn't say not to say it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Jesus rode on an ass. We're, it said so. We're the ones that thought that was bad. <laughs> yeah. He never said you can't say ass. Exactly. Or tits. Tits is one you can't say on, on air, too, right? We can't say that. Yeah, can't we can't say, say that on the radio. No. Weird. That's one of those uh, ten words. Yeah. You can say boobs, you yeah. can say tits. Yeah. You can say teats. Oh. But that's so close that people yeah. stay away from teats. Yeah. Th- does that even pass like a uh, spell check on a computer or anything? What with teats? Yeah. I don't know. What's what is it? T E E? It only depends what guy you're talking to because it might be teats. Teats. Yeah, no, it's not in spell check. Yeah. So what the heck? So that's that's a free pass. <laughs> That's right. Spell check said it was cool. Let's do it. You grew up in Hickory? Yeah. Okay, yeah. See, I was, uh, I was born and raised right on the Halloween Fair campus. Oh, okay. So, I don't, we didn't grow up too far apart. No, exactly. Yeah. My brother went to Western Carolina. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. party school. He was a catamount. Oh, mm-hmm. Back when it was a dry county, is it still dry? Is, <laughs> is it still dry? Yeah? Okay. Depends on whose car you're in. Right. Is that- <laughs> we've got Bud Drive. We've got Michelob Drive. <laughs> Yeah, that's why he. It's, it's like there's nothing to do, so you just join a frat. I mean, I love going there. Yeah. Like yeah, it's beautiful up there. Yeah, but the, he he didn't last long. He did that about two years. And went to then he came here. He went to UNC. Uh, oh, Charlotte. really? Yeah, yeah. Really, the I second to, party school. So he's a niner. <laughs> he yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and I heard they're having their first football game. They are Saturday. They that's are. awesome. How does that make you feel that you can go all over the world and know that your brother was a niner? <laughs> the, the same as anyone else <laughs> who wouldn't have known. Outside of you, is there anybody more famous in your family? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, maybe my my dad now, just because I've talked yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think so. But you know, you've never been that guy who's ever looked at fame and said, "That's me." You, you've always been you. Yeah, pretty much. How is that? So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm used to it. I don't know. It's like, uh, I mean, I. I you know, I've always wanted to be a stand-up. When yeah. you grow up in Hickory, it's not really a possibility. It's it's just a dream, you know. And I didn't even know that there were comedy clubs all over the country. I thought it was just L.A. and New York, and that was it. So yeah. when people say, oh, you're funny, you should be a comedian, I go, huh, thanks, you know, it's just a dream or whatever. And then I went to school at NC State in Raleigh, and there was a comedy club right next to the campus. Wow. It's called Charlie Goodnights. Mm-hmm. I was like, what, they have a comedy club here? So I was like, I'm going to check this thing out. And then, you know, I go in there and I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. So I never really thought I would end up doing this. I yeah. kind of would dream about it and want to do it, uh, but never thought it would end up a, as a career. Did you ever Did you ever go to yesterday's yeah. bakery yeah. and go, I'm going to play this place one day? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no longer there. They got rid of it. Yeah. I have a brick from there. Do you really? Yeah, because I that's where I asked my wife to marry me. No was kidding. Yesterday's. It was right in the middle of a bikini contest. We were going to do uh, the <laughs> Did announcing. you win? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was right before they were going to announce who the winner was, and and I I got on my knee and I asked her because I thought yeah, I have everybody's attention. Oh, that's cool. And so so Larry up there yesterday's made sure I got a brick before they before they took it. Nice. All I actually got kicked out of that place. Nice. What'd you do? Uh, fighting. <laughs> you know, there's always a fight that broke out. Yeah. This it was weird. This one. I was there with like ten of my friends, you know, and uh, we we were all just hanging out in different areas, you know, and uh, these three dudes walks up to me. My my friend Brad and another guy, and he walks up to Brad. And goes, is, "Is your name John Wright?" He goes, "No, I'm I'm Brad Whaley." He goes, "I think you look like John Wright." He goes, "Well, no, I'm I'm Brad Whaley." He goes, 
I think you're John Wright. And then he just hit him. He just, because apparently this guy didn't like John Wright. Uh, so he got hit for looking like somebody else. But what they didn't know, those three guys didn't know that they were surrounded by 10 of us. Because we were just all we were talking together at the same time. They didn't yeah. know that. And they, we had to take turns beating these guys up. Like we were fighting each other to fight these guys. So we were just punching and punching and punching. And then these big bouncers come and. I remember just standing outside, still cussing these guys as they're leaving, and this bouncer said, "I told you to get." And he put me in a headlock and walked me out oh, to the no. parking lot like that. I couldn't breathe. I was like, "I'm leaving." But um, well, baby got back his plane in the background. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I love that place, man. That was fun. I used to go there all the time, yeah. dance my dance my butt off. So how, being from Hickory, that you didn't get lost because it's like 56 West Street, 15th 40, oh, you know, right. it's like Northwest, and it's like. It's like you yeah. can't give directions in Hickory. It's the worst. When people are visiting and they try to go downtown Hickory, yeah. it's the worst. Yeah, there's a First Avenue, First Court, First Lane, First. Uh, there's like all numbers, and they've got different versions of the streets. You know what I mean? So it, it is complicated. But uh, I didn't. I, I actually grew up in Mountain View, which is like on the uh, just the outskirts of Hickory. Are there by Granite Falls or? Um, no, nah, kind of. No, no, no. Hickory um, Mountain View is a little bit closer to Newton. Oh. So I actually went to high school in Newton, even though I was on the right on sort of the border of Newton and Hickory. Okay. So the Hickory was where the preppies went. See, Hickory yeah. High, that was a preppy <laughs> school. Fred T. Ford, that's where the rednecks went. We're the future farmers of America. You know, we're the ones who grow stuff for the preppies to eat. But yeah, that's that part of Highway 16 where you're going. We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> it was your guys' house. That's you know? right. Keep like, going. <laughs> yeah. Mountain View. I don't know why they call it Mountain View. We got one mountain. It's not even really a mountain. It's just like a big hill, Baker's Mountain. But uh, you can see it. <laughs> so that's now, Mountain now being View. a total redneck, when Dale Earnhardt put his little dealership up there, did you, did you go, damn, it's big now? Oh, that's big time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you got that one, and you got uh, uh, Jarrett had yeah. his place in yeah. uh, there. So, yeah, and there's Hickory Motor Speedway, where this guy was actually uh, raced a couple times. Are you kidding? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it was big. You know, racing's big. but uh, And the crawdads. And the crawl dads, yeah, I got to throw out a first pitch uh, not too long ago. Wow. That was fun. That was fun. It was like it was the hottest day, I think, on the history of in, in Hickory. <laughs> but uh, it was fun doing that. And I thought I had, well, I better do something funny. I can't just throw a strike. That's not funny. Yeah. So then I pretended that it, like, fell on my hands, and I just bowled it down like a bowling guy. <laughs> and then I got booed for that. I'm like, wait a second. I was trying to be funny. <laughs> I, I could have thrown a strike, but there's nothing funny but a strike. Um, but no, I, I, I get back there to Hickory about uh, you know twice a year, at least for Thanksgiving and Christmas, that kind of stuff. You're hanging out in Los Mom Angeles Mom and Dad still time. lives there. I live in L.A. now. Yeah. yeah what so. part? Uh, Studio City. You know what that is? Yes, North I Hollywood. Do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I live right on the corner of Colfax and Ventura. Wow. Right behind CBS Radford. Yeah. And I, I used to love that. I still do, actually. But I, I, uh, I tell people this all the time. If you, if you want to get a sitcom canceled, all you have to do is buy a house within walking distance. <laughs> and they will cancel it for you. <laughs> so I was on a – Rodney Carrington had a sitcom. I was on that for two seasons. Yeah. And I could actually just walk to, to work and walk back home. So that, that was the best. But, yeah, I live right there. It's a nice little area. That's cool. So then, I mean, so you have no urge of coming back home just for that couple of times a year? Or? Yeah, well, the, all, I do have urge to come back home. I mean, I really want to. I miss it. Um, but the auditions are in L.A. And, you know, I want to be, you know, I want to go on to do my own sitcom, be in movies and stuff like that. I'm going to be on the new season of Eastbound and Down on HBO. Are you? Yeah. Oh, my God. So in order to get that part, I had to be in L.A. to audition for and it. And wasn't that dude on Eastbound and Down discovered in Kannapolis? Um, what you talking about, Danny McBride? Yeah. Or the character, yeah, the, no, the, Kenny Powers, the actual guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, maybe so. He's from Virginia, oh. but he did go to school at Greensboro at the North Carolina School of Arts, where he met Jody Hill, which is the other creator, and, and Ben Best. They all went to uh, the North Carolina School of Arts. Because he's got that Cabarrus County kind of Oh, yeah. Oh, on. totally. He does. He can pull it off real well. Yeah. Th- those guys are good at what they do. So, you know, you know, around Charlotte here, it was always like Gaston County and Albemarle. Uh-huh. You guys up in Hickory, I mean, being, you know, being a redneck. Sure, sure. Was there anybody that you just said, Man, they're more redneck than I am? Oh, my God. I'm not a redneck when I go home. <laughs> no, I'm Hollywood. Yeah, that's what they call me. Look at Hollywood. Look at them fancy blue jeans he's got on. Did you get that at the mall, Hollywood? That's a fancy cell phone you got there. I guess you're too good for a cord. <laughs> and then I, uh, you know, then I, but then I go back to L.A. and I'm redneck. So it depends on where you're at. Because I, I don't think I sound redneck that much. I mean, I got friends that sound redneck. You know, yeah, they yeah. color we 
get some guys from Color Week can tell you that. But I, I uh, yeah, I, I got friends who really talk like this, you know, yeah. kind of like Sugar Bear from Honey Boo Boo. Like, you know, <laughs> I think Lana win Miss America one day. I think she really can. <laughs> Do you ever get upset with the way Hollywood will put a non-Southern person in a movie and yes. they fake that Southern yes. accent? Yes, that you pisses me off it. more than anything. Absolutely, True Blood is that's why I don't watch True Blood. Mm -hmm. it, uh, they don't. They they hired like Australians and stuff, and they just butcher it, and it, it takes me out of it because I know what it's supposed to sound like. That's right. So when I'm watching it, I'm going like, oh, they're. I can't even get into the story because all I'm thinking about is how they're butchering the Southern accent. Yep. What they need to do is have a, a redneck vampire on that show. <laughs> <That'd be awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, let me suck y'all's blood. Just, just, just one big fang in the front, like a buck tooth fang. <laughs> Come here. He don't have a coffin. He's got a refrigerator. It's out in the front yard. He sleeps in that. <laughs> they all do that. True blood, if you're listening, put me on. I want to be a redneck vampire. <laughs> I mean, you probably have to go down through Louisiana, and you have to pick up that Louisiana southern accent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, you know. Exactly. You know, back in the 80s, it was guarantee, but I don't, yeah. I don't hear anybody talking like that from Louisiana anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's still there. I mean, the, if you watch uh, certain uh, uh, reality shows with a turtle man, not turtle man, but there's a couple of them. There's some that are in, uh, I forgot what it was called, like Gator Boys or Gator Hunting or something. I don't know. There's there's like 18 of them these days. So, But there is one that is based in uh, like uh, um, the bayou or whatever yeah. of uh, Louisiana. And those guys, they got the Cajun, the Cajun you know, accent. You know what you would be good doing? Monday well, night football through a redneck's eyes. I would love to do that. Wouldn't I'm I, a huge football fan. And, and just, just doing the game, and you, you don't have to know who the players are. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a foul. <laughs> Throw the flag. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> they should do that. I thought about that doing a podcast yeah. where it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commentate this game. It's going to be live. You turn – the, your your TV to this game and just turn the sound down and you just listen to my podcast and I'm going to commentate the game for you. Wouldn't that be awesome? I, I thought about doing that. Like and they have like a real guy in there who actually can call some you know the game like the real way and yeah. then have me doing the color part of it or whatever. I think that'd be fun. And then and then all the advertising is just product placement. Man, give me some <laughs> of that Bojangles in here. <laughs> <laughs> Quit hogging it. Where's the tea? <laughs> Exactly. Why? Why did you give me that kind of toilet paper? <laughs> right. I told you I like two ply. This is one ply. I need at least two. I have to bend it over now. I have to fold it. So did did you feel like that you made it when you did the Hemi commercial, or when did you actually think that's it? I, I don't know. Uh, well, I think winning Last Comic Standing was a big one. Yeah. Um, but even before that, I was on a sitcom, and to me, that was the dream. Still is uh, yeah. to be on network television as an actor. You know, I, I went to school at NC State for acting. I was a theater major. Yeah. Um, but I backed into that. I wasn't even trying to. You know. <laughs> I barely got into NC State. Like, you know, I transferred from Catawba Valley Community College yeah, to NC yeah, State, yeah. and they had, like, the quarter system, and, and the NC State has a semester system. Okay. So when you try to transfer, it's like, oh, does not compute. Uh, so I basically had to start over. Um, and they, it wasn't like I could just get in. They had this thing called the Lifelong Program where you can take one – uh, one PE and two classes, and if you do well, they might admit you as a full-time student. Oh, I did that for two semesters <laughs> before I finally got in. I thought, that was hard. I better pick something easy. What's, what's the easiest major? I didn't even know what I want to major in. I was like, what, what's the easiest? I was like, I don't know. What are the athletes taking? Uh, the, the, okay, theater, I'll do that. <laughs> so um, I just backed in it because I thought it would be easy, and then yeah. I got in there and actually fell in love with it. And then, you know, people told me I was decent at it, and they wanted to work with me, and I just kept doing it, you know? And then comedy came after that, did stand-up yeah. later. But, and this was up at state. Yeah, NC so you're State. You're Wolfpack. I'm a Wolfpack. That's right. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, One of my favorite memories of being at NC State is uh, I told you I'm a football fan. And, yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, Duke and NC State, uh, when they play football, it's always a close game. Even if Duke is horrible and yeah. we're good, or vice versa, it's always a close game. And I remember uh, it was uh, like a Thursday night game or something, and uh, it was uh, it was a blowout. We were killing Duke. It was like uh, no, I'm sorry, Duke was killing us. Mm -hmm. It was like uh, 27 to three or something, and it started raining. And everyone, let's get out of here. So all the students just start leaving and uh, to go out in the parking lot and finish drinking their keg beer, <laughs> yeah. you know. So and back then you could go back into the game as long as you had your ticket stub. So anyway, everyone goes back in the parking lot and they start drinking. And sure enough, we start coming back slowly and slowly. And before you know it, it's fourth quarter and it's a tie ball game. And all these students who have been drinking oh, no. come running back into the stadium <laughs> and they're sock soaking wet, <laughs> hammered. And sure enough, we win the game with the last second field goal or 
something, and everybody just rushes the, the field to take the goalpost down. And I'll never forget this. There was one dude who made it out to the field faster than the rest of the crowd. Like, he was leading the charge to the goalpost. He was probably about 20 feet in front of this crowd. Like, he was fast. And he would come running. I don't know where, like, uh, eight cops come and just grab this dude. <laughs> and the crowd saw that, and they turned around and took the other goalpost down where there was no cops. So this one dude... <laughs> Took the bullet for everybody, and we tore the goalpost down. I wrote it out of there. It was awesome. It's like the guy at Tenement Square, you know, that stands out there in front of the. He is like, right. not everybody was going to be hey, behind me. Man. Come on, guys. <laughs> Throw our team here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I miss old NC State. Yeah. What, what's the craziest thing you did on the Catawba River growing up? Well, you know, I, well, I didn't go there that much. Really? I, I, but when I did, I had a blast. I mean, we'd go tubing. Tubing's the best. Yeah. You know, just tubing is like the leisure activity for the lazy alcoholic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's the only time you can drink and pee in the same spot. <laughs> and, and, and nobody cares. What are y'all doing? We're pissing. <laughs> this water's warm today. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's fun. And if you have a friend who's got like a speedboat, it's always fun to go, you know, go skiing. But you don't even need to have skis to have a good time with a speedboat. You can right. pull anything that floats. Right. You know, air mattress. That floats. It's got air in it. You know, fiberglass awning. They float. I saw a family of four have a great time in the old garage door. <laughs> <laughs> it would. It floats. Where do you find your, your connection to the next best joke? Are you, are you watching TV or are you sitting at a, a Panera Bread? Oh, uh, you, I, I kind of watch TV. I got to see what people else are watching. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. like, you got to be able to identify with them. So I kind of see what, what's going on and then go like, oh, my God, I got to talk about this, you know. Yeah. Um, but mostly I try to keep it personal. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I find for me – what, what makes me laugh the hardest is when someone is telling a story that is that happened to them, not like they're reporting on someone else, yeah. but something that happened to them. Like for me, when I was a kid, Bill Cosby was a big influence because he had this special called Bill Cosby himself. Yeah. Where it was just him in a chair in an audience, and he just told stories, and they were hilarious and clean, and everyone could enjoy it. And um, I, I kind of like that. That's the second time you've said clean. Is that, is have you made that your goal? Is no, that, no, that not on purpose. Time? It's funny. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I'm, I don't think I'm a dirty comic at all, yeah, yeah. even when I don't have to be clean. Yeah. But I think it takes a little bit more effort to try and be funny and clean. It's a right. little harder, I think. But and I have no problem against people who are dirty comics. You yeah. know, uh, some of my favorite ones are dirty comics. But I, I prefer for me to be clean. Um, you know, because I was. Figure my mom might be watching or, or, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So I try and keep it yeah, clean. Yeah, because I go to all these movie premieres, and I sit there next to these big-name uh, uh, critics and stuff, and they'll sit there and they'll go, man, they had to go there. Man, you had to take it to the toilet. And, right, and right. It's, and it's like – and it's there's got to be those people that go, yeah. you know. Yeah, like that was man. unnecessary. Yeah. Sometimes it's unnecessary. Are, if it's necessary, it's fine, you know, but sometimes it's, it's not even necessary. Are you unscripted or are you reading the audience and knowing where to go just by the vibe? Of the I'd audience? say uh, about 75 80 percent of what I'm going to do, I already know what I'm going to do. Yeah, like I yeah. wrote the joke, I, I, I know how I want to say it. But you can't just go up there and read a script. You got to be able to play off the crowd a little bit and read their their energy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I try to make eye contact with the crowd. There's some comics will get up and kind of look over them and just do their act. Mm -hmm. I like to look right at people and, yeah. and then maybe ask them questions and sort of get into it that way a little yeah. bit. Um, but for the most part, it is sort of I, – I, I have an act that I'm doing, but I am not just doing it at you. I'm doing it like with you. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. So if if you were to like uh, just put your act on YouTube and just set it out there, I mean everybody's sitting there on their phones, anyway. right? I mean, would you just would you know it's what what was it Tupac that did that the, uh, the hologram. oh the hologram yeah, oh like, that'd be great John reap the hologram <laughs> this weekend I would love that I wouldn't have to travel anymore I mean look at all these preachers now man it's like eight locations yeah you know, hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, uh, I think I saw a little clip of that hologram on YouTube and it looked pretty pretty interesting yeah I, I, you know that's impossible for comics though because we have to actually talk to the crowd sometimes. Time. So that'd be weird if you're up there doing your act and then like a waitress, you know, knocks over a whole table of drinks and you can't and you just keep going like it didn't happen, you know. So you got to be able to uh, to actually uh, be aware of what's happening in the room. Do you think do you think doing radio would be hard for you then since you can't see the audience? 
Uh, it's different. I think it's hard. I mean, I, what you guys do is not easy because you're not even sure if it's, I, if it's I, going I over well. I think they're looking at me when I'm yeah. talking. I really do, but you just don't see them. You don't know. I did, I did some podcast stuff with a buddy of mine, and, and we, we just, it's kind of like radio, but yeah. but you never know what the feedback is. I, with a, with comedy, it's immediate feedback. You know right away if it worked or if it didn't work. Uh, with radio and TV or film, you don't know until someone tells you like a week later or something, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or you look at your ratings and you find out how, you know what, what the feedback was, but... So that's hard. And, and then, of, of course, being here every day, you know, and coming up with uh, fresh content all the time yeah. is not easy uh, as, as well. So uh, hats off to you guys. I don't think it's But easy. we never have to find it. We, we don't have to hire people to find our stage, though. That's true. So yeah. <laughs> you, wanna, you, wanna you know where that in? is every day. <laughs> right. You know exactly the best way to get there. <laughs> the, so you want to do television. What, what do yeah. you think is the one, one thing that is keeping them from saying, you're my guy? Is, is it because television hasn't rediscovered real comedy yet and they're still stuck on reality? The, partly. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, things are changing all the time. Yeah. So so that's part of it. Um, I think part of it, too, is, you know, it's weird. It's like L.A. does not get Southern culture. They don't understand it. They don't know why it's funny. Um, and then that's why you probably won't see guys like uh, – Larry the Cable Guy, Jeff Foxworthy, Bill Engvall, Ron White having their own TV show. Right. I mean, they do well. They're a huge success, but that's because they did their own thing, and mm-hmm. they made a movie out of it, and they, and they, they believed in themselves, and they, they invested their own money in this stuff. L.A., just they would never have done that. Um, right. but, so it's, they don't get, it's, hard, it's hard for a Southern guy, believe it or not, to, to make it in Los Angeles. There's no better comedy than a Southerner. I agree. Oh my god! I agree. I mean, the stories. I mean, these some of these stories about grandparents and just the sister. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, you're right. I mean, that's why. Uh, I mean, that's that's why I I'm I'm loving Eastbound and Down mm-hmm. because it is Southern guys um, who uh, have made their own thing. Luckily, Will Ferrell has a sense of humor. Yeah. And he saw this movie that. Um, that Ken, Ken, uh, Danny McBride and Jody Hill made called The Foot Fist Way. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I did. That was okay. filmed over in Kannapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so he saw it and thought that was hilarious. I want to get to know this guy. And they created Eastbound and Down. Yeah. So that's why I'm loving this show is because, it, you know, it's an HBO show, so they can say what they want and do what they want, and they can be as crazy as they want, which I love, sec- first of all. Secondly, uh, it's it's based in the South, and it's a nice portrayal of the South. It's not like... It's not like someone from outside of the South coming in and making fun of it. It's mm-hmm. guys from the South making fun of it, but in a, you know, like a, it's like your sister or your brother. You you're allowed to make fun of them, but outsiders are not. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So so I'm I'm loving that part of it. So what if you were in Los Angeles and you could bring a piece of Southern yard art? Now keep in mind <laughs> Southern yard art. Oh, what would you drop on your porch or in the backyard and make sure that you protect it? I mean, you'd fight for it, man. You just can't. You just can't take that away from me. Uh, southern. Well, let's see. I I don't have a front yard. <laughs> I, 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 a, I just have I have a little uh, what do you call just a little porch? Not a not even a porch. It's more of just like a stoop. Yeah. You know, and I got a grill out there. I got one of those water hoses that uh, that that shrinks and expands. Oh my God. The flexi hose. I love that thing. I feel like I feel like I'm doing something naughty every time I turn it on. I was like, this is legal. You have to get some Viagra for it. About a couple <laughs> That's months what it feels now. like. It's like. Yeah. Um, but let's see. Right now, I've got just uh, I've got <laughs> I've got like this turtle. Um, that's like a like a metal turtle that just sits next to the door that someone gave me. You know, when I first moved, here's here's the difference, right? When I first moved into my place, the lady who owned it before me um, was a Jewish lady. Yeah, and, 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 and I, so I, I, the lady who was like doing the uh, homeowners association, the, the 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 rep or whatever, who goes around and checks on everybody. You know, I was a new guy moving in, and, and she's Jewish too. Yeah. And uh, so I'm moving in, and uh, like I'm standing in front of my front door. And she goes, "Oh, I didn't know. Are you you're Jewish?" I was like, "No, no. I mean, not saying they go, oh, I, no, I'm, no, I'm, I don't know what I am. I'm not, I'm not I'm John Reed." But <laughs> she goes, "Oh no, I, I just noticed you have a mezuzah." Oh no! I was like, "What? A mezuzah? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She goes, "Right here on your front door. That's a Jewish thing." I was like, "Oh no, that was from the lady before." She goes, "Oh well, then." And she just she took it down immediately. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yep. maybe I should uh, bring a mezuzah to Hickory. <laughs> <laughs> They changed him out. Look there. at him. Hollywood has <laughs> done change religions on us. He's going to be a Scientologist next. Oh, my God. Uh, do you think do you think uh, Californians have stranger lives than Southerners? Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I, um, 
I think uh, California's messed up. Mm-hmm. They're, they're stupid. I mean, it's like a – California is like a hot blonde that <laughs> never had to really do anything, but people always loved her because she's a hot blonde. Right. Um, and she gets by on just being a hot blonde, Where, whereas like North Carolina is like the cute – Cute sort of brunette that's smart, uh, but has to work really hard, you know, <laughs> yeah, to right. get the guys that she wants. Whereas LA is just dumb, you know. But they got nice weather and they got nice uh, mountain ranges and beaches. And but you know, North Carolina is like, well, we got four seasons, mm-hmm. but they actually work harder. Um, I think uh, North Carolina is way better than than California. Mm-hmm. I mean, just look at you just look at the um, stats, you yeah. know, like they're. California is so in debt. North Carolina is not. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I miss North Carolina. I would love. I wish that the entertainment capital of the world was here in Charlotte. We're gonna have to move you to Wilmington then. Uh, I mean, uh, that's they, where we shot Eastbound and Down. I was oh, there for all summer. Awesome. I, I love it down there. It was all over the news this morning that California has announced that they're in an emergency crisis now yep. because Hollywood is not uh, making movies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're going to have a, a film czar. Yeah. So Did you hear the, about that? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, and everything is that's in, how stupid and, they are. They ran their own business out of the yep. state. Yeah, and people yeah. go to Vancouver. They go to North Carolina. They go everywhere yeah. to shoot. But but California, <laughs> that's how stupid they are. So right, yeah. Final question. Let's say that uh, John Stewart's success in doing this new movie uh, puts him back in in the Hollywood, and they come to you and they say, "We need you to run that show. Do you take over for John Stewart? Because you know you're connected, you know you've got personality, and you know that you can reach beyond that screen." Do you Without do like that? a question, yes. Good for you. Definitely. Do you have? Wait, are you are you proposing something? Do you no, have, no. <laughs> 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 That'd be great. No, I'd love to do something like that. I think my dream would be. Um, well, I like doing movies. I, I was in East, I was in uh, uh, Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay, and I did a movie called Black Sky, which isn't out yet. Mm-hmm. And I love doing movies, mm-hmm. uh, but you have to travel a lot. I think my my what I love to do most is just be on a sitcom because when I was on Rodney Carrington's sitcom, uh, ne- a primetime network TV sitcom is what I want because mm-hmm. it is the the e- the easiest amount of work with the most pay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can walk to work and walk right home and not have to travel as much. Um, I, that's that's the goal, you know. What do you do with all the downtime, though? Because I was just on a set. There was so much downtime. Right. And and I tried to befriend all of the union people. They won't talk to me. They won't talk to you. They say, come on, no, I'm no, a no. good guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of hurry up and wait, isn't it? It is. It's like, hurry, we need you over here. Okay, just hang on, hang on. <laughs> Stay right there. We're going to come back in five minutes. Where is he? <laughs> yeah, that's that. Um, How do you deal with that? It's, you know, Well, you got an iPhone with games on it. You know, there's Facebook. <laughs> There's other people that are also bored. You talk to them, you know. So there's ways to feel. I mean, when I first moved to LA, I was an extra for a while. Yeah. And that was that was weird because I I kind of wanted to see what that life was like, you know. And so I remember I was you know the movie Ali with Will Smith. Yeah. I'm in that movie. Really. But you'll never see me because it's a stadium scene. So they're fighting and there's this huge stadium and they have to make it look like it's packed. But they can't afford to pay all these extras to sit in every seat in the stadium because it's gigantic. So what they do is they move them around depending on which way the camera's facing. Uh, but since it's so big, they had to get people up in the cheap seats too. So I'm sitting under the cheap seats by myself. Oh, they no. can't afford to fill them, so they got cardboard cutouts of people. I'm sitting next to cardboard cutouts <laughs> that are on a stick, and I got to move them back and forth just to give it movement. Oh, and I remember God. just like doing this, <laughs> thinking to myself, "This is why I came to LA <laughs> to move <laughs> to move cardboard cutouts of people and get for a box lunch and thirty five dollars. This is horrible." But um, I learned a lot just being there and doing that, you know. So, so yeah. Why aren't you <laughs> directing then? Um, I haven't had the opportunity, you know. Okay. If it comes up, I totally would. Um, Dude, you, got, you got a smartphone. That's true. Start making movies. I did direct. Uh, okay, then I did direct some stuff. Actually, I directed. Uh, it wasn't for the Wiener guy up there in New York. No. Was it okay. Is it, no. <laughs> no. Need you to move to the right. I did. Uh, <laughs> I did a uh, fake. Uh, you know the song "Moves Like Jagger." Yes. I did a spoof of that called "Moves Like Haggard." Merle Haggard. <laughs> Oh. And it's not about Merle Haggard. It's about a chick who looks like Merle oh, Haggard in no. a dress. And you can find that on YouTube. I wrote and uh, directed that video. And then uh, I did some sketches for my uh, DVD a while back called John Reap Metro Jethro. There's one called uh, uh, Hoarder. You know the, mo- the show yeah, Hoarders? Yeah. I, did a f- I did one where, <laughs> the, you know the song Jimmy Crack Corn and I Don't Care? I, I was like, what? I don't even know what crack corn is. Sounds like a drug. It sounds like, a, <laughs> yeah. sounds like an inner city hillbilly drug. What happened to Jimmy? He's stuck on the crack corn. <laughs> yeah. I don't care, but he is. And so I made like a fake uh, intervention 
about uh, about a guy who's addicted to crack corn. Right, right. And so that that was one we did. I said hoarders, I made uh, intervention. Um, and then I did one. Uh, God, what was the other one? Oh, where I go into a Warner Brothers meeting about my DVD, and they want to. They want. They don't think I'm Southern enough. Oh. So they hire a guy to come in to teach me how to be Southern, and it's just horrible. So uh, yeah, I directed those. <laughs> so that counts, awesome. right? Yeah. That's awesome. So do you still feel like you're undis- undiscovered then? It's weird. I, it's, it comes in waves. Like I'll have like a big rush of something. Like Winning Last Comic Standing was big, and then I had this development deal with NBC, and we we're supposed to work together and do a show, and it just yeah. kind of went nowhere. Yeah. And then uh, the commercials was a big one. When I first did a bunch of the Dodge truck commercials, people were like, "Who's this guy?" That's a funny commercial. It was a very popular campaign. Let's do something with it, and then it just kind of went nowhere. It just kind of goes up like this. So I'm hoping that this eastbound and down with the next wave, and I can uh, hopefully do something with that. Hey, maybe you're the new host of The Price Is Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I auditioned for the uh, host of Let's Make a Deal. Are you you would have been brilliant on yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the other guy's brilliant too. What's it? Wayne Brady. Yeah, Wayne Brady. You can't yeah. beat Wayne Brady. Yeah, but when I see Wayne Brady, I, I want him to sing to me. Yeah. Dude, sing. I <laughs> right. don't care about anything else. Just right. sing. Right. Yeah, make it up right now. <laughs> yeah. Make up a song about my hair. Go. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are good at that. But yeah, uh, yeah so I went in there and auditioned for that. It was a weird audition. But um, yeah, I, I, I was like, why, why am I in here? But I'll do it. You know, I'll yeah. do it totally. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. I, you know, things come up. You audition. Maybe you get it. Maybe you don't. Hopefully, uh, Eastbound and Down will, will uh, parlay into something bigger and better. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, John Reap. Comedy Thanks, Zone. guys. Yes. The Carolinas' very own John Reap. Yes. What, what is your website? So then go to your website. Go to johnreap.com, J O N R E E P.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Just type in John Reap, J O N R E E P, and you'll find me. What the hell? Your parents couldn't afford an H? Or something? <laughs> My dad said he didn't want me named after a toilet. <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll take the H out. Yeah, They'll never call me a toilet without H in there. Brilliant! <laughs> Good job, man.